All right, so now let's look at the proof of this Euclid Euclid's GCD formula, which is the GCD of two integers m and n is GCD of n comma m mod n. Now note that what we are trying to prove here is actually any divisor that is any integer actually, any integer that divides m and n also divides n comma m mod n. As you notice, um, even though the magnitude of the integers reduce, um, you're going from m and n to n comma m mod n. Whatever divides m and n will also divide n comma m mod n. So that's kind of a very powerful thing, isn't it? So, for example, if you start up with something like um, GCD of um, GCD of uh, what is that? So let's say 100 comma 30, 100 comma um, anything. Let's say 18, right? So that's nothing but the GCD of 18 comma 100 mod 100 mod 18, right? So that comes out to be. GCD of 18 comma 10 100 mod 18 is 10 all right so whatever that divides 118 also divides 18 and 10 there's no integer that divides 118 and cannot divide 18 and 10 no everything that divides 118 can also divide 18 and 10 so that's what is this theorem and the greatest among this is the GCD right so that's what we are trying to uh, prove so let d be an integer that divides both m and n right so we need to prove that d also divides n and m mod n as i said anything that divides m and n should also be able to divide n and m mod n now since d divides both m and n d divides also m minus n right why okay so if d divides m we can say m is some q1 times d all right so i can say that for sure isn't it so let me pick up a better number set of uh, what is that we have here we have an example Probably we can pick um, GCD of say um, one twenty comma is it forty five? It's better. All right. So um, so I can say. 120 so let's say my d is 15 okay so i can say now of my m which is 120 equals some coefficient which is going to be 8 times this d which is 15 so my q1 in this case is going to be 8 right similarly n it's going to be 45 is 3 times 15 so that is going to be q22 equals 3 right so since d divides both m and n i can write them m as um, that d which is 15 times a quotient when you divide m by d similarly when you divide n by d the quotient is 3 so i can say n is that quotient q2 times 15 so now what we do, we do m minus n is going to be m minus n is going to be that q1 times d minus q2 times a d. So I can take q1 and q2 outside and q1 minus q2 times d. So it's now you have basically m minus n is some integer, q1 
minus q2 is an integer times d so we can say now what d divides m minus n now <clears throat> uh, what is that we have when you divide m divided by n right we get what the quotient q and the reminder is what m mod n so i can represent that as m equals when you divide by n so it's q times n plus m mod n so this is what it is right we divide m by n so for example when you divide uh 120 by 45 i can say 120 equals what 120 equals a quotient which is 2 2 times the 45 the 45 is n plus the reminder 120 mod 45 which is going to be 30 so this is what it is right so this is 2 times 45 which is 90 plus a 30 so this q is going to be our n as a 2 okay q is 2 n is 45 so now okay since d divides n right d also divides some quotient q times n right if for example d divides uh, or 15 or what is that yeah 15 divides 45 so 15 also divides what 2 times 45 which is 90 right so what we have m so d divides m from initial thing also d divides q q times n so from what we discussed before if d divides m and d divides q minus n i can say d divides m minus q times n right so what is m minus q times n m minus q times n is going to be from this is going to be m mod n so since d divides m minus q times n d divides m mod n so that's the proof so any such integer that can divide m and n also divides n and m mod n okay so the getters of them is the gcd right <clears throat>